Hi, I'm Jeff, the Thrifty Overlander. In this video, I want to cover the DIY truck paint job that I did. This is going to be the start of a pretty big project for me. I am going to change my rig a little bit. I'm going to basically do a paint job on it. And um, I'm going to get into what I'm going to do and everything else. But first, I want to start out with what, what I'm starting with. So this is the way it looks today. I just cleaned it up because it needs to be uh, cleaned for the paint job. Um, you can see it had some problems. The, uh, the fender here, the, the paint, the clear coat's completely gone and it's uh, pretty bad on the, on the hood. You can see there's even some clear coat uh, failing. But this is basically how it looks today. The only thing I've done that you see here is I did paint the, the roof rack and in this guy on this side I have painted the two rims with some um, uh, plastic dip otherwise this is the way I got it I'll just take a look around on it so I got a, kind of a before and an after you see the bumpers are uh, pretty milky a lot of discoloring it from the Sun and everything so this is a good example of the side then what it looks like Whenever I did get it, this has the, the rim still is silver. I, uh, I got two done. I'm going to get the other two done here sometime. It doesn't look so bad in the uh, when it's in the shade, but there is the same thing on this side. The, the paint is gone on the uh, fender. All right, so I'm getting started on the painting. What I'm going to do is a stuff called Monster Liner. It's kind of a truck bed liner. It's, um, I've seen it on a couple other vehicles, and it turned out pretty good. It's not super, super bumpy but it's still got enough bump to it to give it some texture. Um, so the first step really is just a uh, prep. So what I've done here is I've used a, you can see I got an orbital sander with a pretty, uh, like a 120 or 180 grit, I don't remember which. Uh, so I kind of made fast work out of getting it roughed up on that. Otherwise what they do is they give you this, um, it's kind of like that scotch or, um, you know, really kind of hard Brillo pad type of stuff and that's what you um, scuff the whole idea is just to get it all scuffed and then then you'll wipe it down with a chemical um, so you can see I've got I got it pretty scuffed the, like I said the um, the orbital made pretty quick work of it I've already done all this scuffing part of it uh, basically you just got to scuff it down so there's no more uh, clear coat gloss to it so much um, that's complete and I've now uh, masked off the areas that I'm gonna basically paint within so it's like painting within the lines right it's that simple that's all it's going to take i wish so this is what i've got i'm going down the sides kind of uh one on the line of the windows right at the bottom of the windows on the hood i'm going to paint the hood outline and the middle top section i'm going to end up painting black just to help with reflection with lights and stuff like that um, so that's where I'm at with that. I... I got both sides. You can see how easy the paint came off where the clear coat was completely gone. It just didn't take hardly anything and the paint came down on some of the spots. So that just shows you how far gone that was. Sun and red paint are a bad combination apparently I, i've been told that red paint is worse than other colors and i'm not going to do anything with the back at this point right now um, i'll see how much paint i have because it might take the whole gallon just to get done what i have the back wasn't really a problem if i decide there's plenty of paint i may do the same thing window down on the back i would just have to uh, do a really quick scuff and, uh, and tape job on it so that's still to be determined, but um, this is what I've got. I'm ready, basically at this point now, I'm ready to do the, the um, start applying. So it's gonna be kind of interesting on that side because I'm a little bit nervous about it, of course. You want it to turn out good. I'm not looking for perfection by far compared to what it was. Anything's gonna be better than it was, but I don't want big runs or horrible color match or something like that. So. Hopefully everything will turn out. All right, so we've mixed the paints. It's an epoxy type paint, so it's there's like a catalyst and a regular paint. So there's the, the paint mixing steps are kind of involved. It takes a little bit, like getting out your chemistry set. Uh, but once the paint's mixed, then it's just a matter of rolling it on. It comes with these special foam rollers that have got a lot of bubbles to them. That's how you get the texture. And um, 
it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking, but you just start rolling paint on your on your truck. That's all there is to it. So that's what we're doing. It comes with a small roller tray, and you just keep filling it up and rolling away. It does do two coats because there is you can see there's little bits of darker color from the original paint showing through, and this paint's a little bit brighter red right now until it dries. It'll, it'll be closer when it's all dry. So that's and we'll just keep going with this route. I have uh, Lori is cutting in on the edges on things so that we make sure they got a good edge um, coverage on it too. So we're kind of a team working it here. So we're getting pretty close to done with the first coat. I ended up deciding to do the back because there's so much paint left. That it, I wasn't even using it. I used about a third of the gallon to do the two sides and what we're doing on the hood. So we decided to hurry up and uh, scuff and, and uh, tape the back side. So Lori's just kind of showing how the, the, you can see the roller actually gets kind of a little bit old on the edge. So it's only good for so long and we're kind of putting to the max on that now. And she's just showing how you got to kind of... Here. Yeah, you get chunks on there. You got to watch for that as it gets as it gets towards the end of your first coat, and just basically showing how she gets it on, and then she goes back and kind of um, levels it out or, or evens it out. I guess is the key word. So you can see the first part where we started over here. It's getting dry. It's got a nice texture to it. Um, you can definitely see on after the first coat a little bit of a shine through on the. Uh, original darker color underneath. I, I assume it's going to dry a little bit darker. So uh, the second coat will cover that pretty well. So that's where we're at so far on the first coat. We're getting there. It says to wait four to six hours to dry for the second coat. So uh, we're going to have a little break in between. So we got the two coats on and stripped off all the uh, tape, masking tape. And now we're kind of just letting her dry. And Lori's doing a bunch of touch-up stuff, you know, like down here in the in the, in the middle of the off-road words, stuff like that. We we had some touch-ups, but I'm pretty happy with the textures about what I thought it would be. It's working out pretty good. It's a little bit more red than I thought, but it might dry a little bit darker. Um, you can see the difference here in the hood where the old color and the new color, that'll turn, the old color will be black. So you can see we're still... Still going at it. So we started about, I don't know, 10 this morning. And it's 5.30 now because there's there a couple hours in there where we had to wait for the paint to uh, between coats. So so that's pretty much where we're at. We're pretty darn close for this one. Then we got the black to do next weekend. Okay, so welcome to the second weekend of the truck painting project. So everything uh, cured. It, takes a, it says it takes a full seven days for this epoxy paint to cure. So I did that. And then uh, this weekend was um, masking and uh, painting the black sections that I wanted to do. I got a small court for uh, a section of that. So I did the center of the hood area and the rocker. On the off-road uh, and Pro 4X versions, it seemed to be that they always had a black rocker, but I just kind of separated it that way. The uh, rock sliders are down there anyway. And then also the, the plastic trim. So that's what was this weekend's project. Basically it was the same process as, as the red, just a lot smaller. And I um, was able to do this with two, two coats uh, with just a quart. And because this is a standard color, it was just simply mixing in the um, epoxy uh, catalyst with the paint, mix it and paint. So. Pretty simple, but this pretty much wraps up the core part of my uh, project to repaint. What I have left is going to be basically these back bumpers. Uh, a friend of mine's already done the monster liner on his truck before, and he did the bumper areas like and this type of stuff it was a little too flexible, and it was uh, causing peeling. So I'm going to do this with the same paint that I did with the roof rack or the old bumpers I did on, on the old vehicles. So these bumpers will be done with uh, the spray bed liner. A little bit more flexible. So that's the only thing I really have left. Uh, and so here's the pieces that I, I'm going to use. I'll show you in a minute. But I got this, you know, foot wide paper, super cheap, it's a, you know, a masking paper, some masking tape and scissors. 
Um, so I'll go over here. The paint I'm using, I've used on a lot of other things, including the, the roof rack, is just this Rust-Oleum uh, truck bed paint. So the rock sliders I just simply took off. I had, the, I had them off already to paint the very bottom in black. And, um, and then the rear quarter panels, or whatever you want to call them, I did take off as well, because uh, one of them was I needed to replace a step that was, uh, had bad uh, connections to it in there, so I'd gotten that from a junkyard. So I wanted one of them off anyway, but they're pretty easy to take off. It's like five screws, and it, and it snaps off. So then from there, I went ahead and just masked off what was left to paint on the truck, and that's just the, the bumper, and the, um, I'll do the hitch area too while I'm at it, but that's all I did. And I masked off, and I'll just try to paint as little as possible to kind of cut down the, the overspray, but just enough to cover it. And then there's the top piece of uh, plastic that goes on the bumper. I already had that off yesterday and painted that as well. So that's all there is to it. I'm just going to paint that up and uh, strip it, and then I'll put everything back together, and that'll pretty much wrap up everything. The one step I think I forgot to mention is I did wipe everything down really well with acetone. Uh, gets the oils and the last bit of dirt and everything off of there. I thought I had everything clean, and you can see how much came off in this sock just in that uh, rear bumper section that was all metal. So I used about a basically, oh, yeah, I had some in another can. So I used a whole can of acetone am amongst this whole thing. I did use some acetone in the Monster Liner. You, um, when you're going in between coats and it's going to sit there a while, you put a little bit of acetone on top of it so it doesn't dry out and then mix it back in and it kind of keeps it uh, a little bit softer so I use basically a whole can so that is one of the items you're going to need on this uh, project. All right it's been a couple three weeks since I started this project and I'm pretty much wrapped up I don't know that there's just maybe a little odds and ends here and there but nothing really major that I want to do but this is my painting project so this is the completed kind of in the same spot as it was when I took the before. Uh, everything except for the windows up has been painted pretty much I have it painted the rims in the past uh, trim was painted the um, rock sliders were painted just do a little walk around here try not to get too shaky I didn't uh, I didn't do the gimbal today I did the rear um, with all the bumpers, the side panels, and of course this side over here. This is what it looks like with the silver rims versus the black rims. So I wanted to do a follow-up video on this project and include some things like some lessons learned. So one of the lessons learned is that I should have went ahead and scuff the hood of the truck when I did the rest of the scuffing to get you know to prep it for paint. Going back later and scuffing that uh, it would made it a lot harder to do. And I probably at the time was thinking, well, if I don't get to do the hood right away, it'll still look all right if I don't scuff it now. And that was a mistake. I should have just went ahead and scuffed it with the rest of the paint. The other thing I should have done is I should have masked off more of the area when I was doing the black part of the hood so that. I don't end up with any splatter. I ended up with a, a, with a few dots of, of the black splatter on the red paint. Another lesson learned is always to get and use extra rollers that uh, come from the company with the special spongy uh, material in them. And that'll help avoid the little chunks that you end up in the paint as those rollers wear out and start to come apart. Uh, another lesson learned is that the roller method, the method worked just fine. I have no problems with that at all. I think it was a, uh, it would be less so if I was doing the whole truck. So when you get to the uh, pillars on the truck and the roof, uh, there's a lot more small detail areas and it'd be a lot harder to get that same texture in those smaller areas. Uh, there is little spongy paint brushes that you can do it with, but I still think it'd be much harder to get them an even texture as, as when you're just rolling out large volumes of space on the smooth areas. And it's been a few months now, the paint has held up really well. I can't complain about that at all. It, it does great with uh, desert pinstriping and, uh, and still looks great and cleans easier than ever. All right, so I used about three quarters of a gallon of the red paint on the truck that I did. That was two coats. I think I might have just squeaked by if I was doing the entire truck that way. It, it, would, be, it would be close, just to give you an idea how much paint was required. If you're, you're doing a big F-150 or something like that, it's obviously going to take more and some vehicles would take less yet. So 
Uh, and I remember I did use a quart of the black paint to do the two coats and I used every every bit of that on that on the hood, the rockers and the trim. Next thing is like my total cost is about $300 for everything and that is absolutely cheap for the tough coating that I got out of it. Uh, it would have been three to five thousand dollars to have a proper regular paint job done with clear coats and everything else. So this is much much cheaper and a much better method uh, for doing it yourself. So I can only think of a couple of negatives about this and um, they're really not that big a deal either way. One of them would be is if I ever get in a fender bender, I've got to come up with that exact paint and, and the method and, and painting uh, extra to make it match the rest of the paint if I ever like have to replace a fender or something like that. The only other thing I could really come up with is it does add maybe 20 pounds or so, give or take, to the weight of the truck. So neither one of them is that big a deal. Would I do it again? That's the big question. And um, it was quite a bit of work and it took quite a bit of time. There's no two ways around that, but it was a fun project and it has huge visible results. You know, some projects like upgrading your shocks, you don't really, you know, maybe it makes the truck better, but you don't like see it in this project. Every time you walk up to the truck or look at it at all, you see the, the results that you get out of it. So it's quite satisfying that way for what you get out of it. Uh, it saved me a lot of money. There's no two ways around that. Uh, more so than I think my time and, and uh, work or effort was, was worth. So uh, I definitely uh, think that I would do it again, yes. So if your truck is looking a little haggard and needs a little bit of fresh look, I definitely think this is a good way to go. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the trail.